Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and get started. This is the, the California Transportation Commission's 2016 Northern STIP hearing. Um, we have a very uh, busy schedule. If any of you have seen the agenda, and we would like to just caution everybody as we listen to the input uh, from the audience uh, that uh, you would uh, try to adhere to the timeline so that we can get through this in a timely manner. Um, we have with us commissioners uh, uh, Fran Inman and Jim Arp, <clears throat> um, and uh, uh, staff, uh, Laurel J uh, Jansen, who is our Assistant Executive Director for Programming, along with uh, Teresa Favila, who is, uh, works in the programming section. And it's my pleasure to uh, introduce to you also, if she needs no introduction, is the uh, incoming Executive Director of the California Transportation Commission, Susan Branson. So we're all very, very pleased to to see Susan uh, taking over, and uh, uh, all of you, I think, know her well and uh, know that the commission will be in good hands. I should also inform you that uh, Jessica Branson, where are you, Jessica, is here, and uh, with maybe some other students. Are, so students, raise your hand. So they are getting credit for attending the Northern California STIP hearing, and it's quite a bit of credit, I might add. It's 100 points. I don't know what the larger scale is, but 100 points for anything is, uh, I think, pretty good. So we want to welcome our students to observe uh, a little bit of uh, transportation uh, uh, democracy in action. Um, for Can I talk about, talk to them about freight? Yeah, and, and uh, we have the freight queen here and Commissioner Inman who will be happy to talk to you about freight so that you know what's going on. Let me, before we begin, uh, see if uh, Commissioners uh, Arp or Inman want to, uh, want to say anything. No, I'm good to get started. Me too. I just appreciate everybody coming. I know this is a tough process we're all doing, and I appreciate everybody working hard together. Uh, very good. So <clears throat> let me officially convene uh, the hearing. I'll give you some safety uh, information. If we need to get out of this building, uh, if you look at the side walls, you'll know that we probably don't have much to worry about. But if we have to, uh, out this door uh, to the right up the steps, through that door, and out into the street. Uh, ladies' restrooms are back here. Men's restrooms are out the door of this room and to the right. Uh, I think that's all the information that we need to go through. Um, we did uh, find some. Thank you. Uh, anybody here named Alejandro? Yeah, the first Alejandro. Yeah, first or last name, because there were some credit cards uh, found outside. They're up there at the security desk. If you if you lost them, somebody somebody else must have. Uh, no, it's right. we're good. <clears throat> well, we may have somebody. That... Okay, that is a uh, that is a uh, announcement that we hear with some degree of frequency in this building. Uh, if somebody has been hurt or there's a problem, so they'll make a few announcements and then then they'll stop. All right, Commissioners, today is the second of the two hearings on the 2016 State Transportation Improvement Program. The STIP is a five-year program of capital improvements adopted biennially in even-numbered years. State law requires the Commission to hold at least two hearings, one in the North and one in the South, before adopting each new State Transportation Improvement Program. The purpose of the hearings as specified in statute, and that's Government Code uh, Section 14529, uh, is to reconcile any objections by any county or regional agency to the Caltrans program or Caltrans objections to any regional program. The hearing also provides an opportunity for each regional agency and Caltrans to explain its proposals and why the Commission should include them in the State Transportation Improvement Program. Each Commissioner has a copy of the hearing briefing book. Uh, prepared by staff. This is not a staff recommendation <coughs> of any kind. It is simply staff's compilation of the Regional Transportation Improvement Programs and the Interregional Transportation Improvement Program presented in a simple format, uh, and single format, by the way. A compilation of this magnitude prepared in a relatively short time is bound to include some errors or misinterpretations. Uh, this work remains subject to updating and correction before preparation of the STIP uh, and uh, the staff recommendations. Anyone concerned is invited to bring us changes and corrections so that we can uh, 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 take that into consideration. Under the law, the Commission may include a project in the STIP only if it has been nominated by a regional agency in its RTIP or by Caltrans in its ITIP. The STIP is constrained by the levels of funding identified in the amended fund estimate adopted by the Commission on January 1st, 2016. 
The fund estimate starts with the revenue assumptions and the, and the basic assumption that nearly $4 billion in projects from the last dip will be carried forward to arrive at the capacity to add new projects to the dip. This estimate identifies a much lower level of STIP funding than was identified in the original 2016 fund estimate approved by the Commission in August of this past year. The estimate of capacity has changed from $46 million, <clears throat> which was essentially zero uh, for the state, to a negative $754 million. This means that projects must be deleted from the State Transportation Improvement Program and remaining projects must be delayed, that is, spread out over the new five-year period. At the front of the hearing book is a summary that compares the RTIPs and the ITIP proposal against the program <coughs> capacity levels identified in the fund estimate. We no longer break down the capacity by fund type, however, we do still show rail and transit projects and bicycle and pedestrian projects separately from highway and road projects for each county and the department. The programming challenge in the 2016 STIP is the lack of sufficient transportation revenues, clear and simple. It leads to a negative target of $754 million and the deletion of already programmed projects. Remaining programming must be re-spread out over the five-year period and $755 million worth of projects, in addition to the three-quarters of a billion projects that need to be cut, will be delayed to the last two years. Proposals received total about $515 million in overall deletions, uh, as identified by the regions, with some new projects and cost increases. Proposed programming in the last two years totals about $350 million, and the first three years of the STIP period remain more than $643 million over-programmed. There are two significant programming challenges in the 2016 STIP. First is that $750 million in projects must be deleted. Second is that $755 million of the remaining programming in the first three years of the STIP must be delayed to the last two years. After the STIP hearing, staff will begin preparing a comprehensive recommendation for adoption of the 2016 STIP. The STIP adoption is scheduled for May 18, 19, 2016 at the Commission's regularly scheduled meeting in Stockton. As required by law, staff recommendations will be published no later than April 22nd, at least 20 days in advance of the STIP adoption. Staff's recommendations will be based on the proposals in the RTIPs and the ITIP, the capacity identified by the fund estimate, the policies and the STIP guidelines, and any further information or guidance that we may receive during and following these hearings. We will continue working with Caltrans and the regions to address any questions or unresolved issues as we develop our staff recommendations and to make sure we understand regional and interregional priorities and that no one is surprised by what we recommend or why. And we have made a previous commitment to the regions to work with you on potential language that could be included in the uh, STIP resolution for the 2016 program uh, that would uh, talk about how projects that have been deleted from the STIP could find their way back into uh, future programming. After this introduction, we will move into the interregional and regional presentations. Caltrans will make a presentation of its ITIP, and each regional agency will have the opportunity to make a presentation regarding its RTIP and to comment on the ITIP. Before Caltrans and each of the regions testify, staff will give a brief overview of the issues specific to that proposal. Members of the public wishing to comment should fill out a speaker's card and can comment following the Caltrans or regional presentation or at the end of the hearing. So with that, let me turn it over to Laurel Jansen, our Assistant Executive Director for Programming. Questions? 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 I'm just looking ahead as to where MTC's first up. Do they have their own breakout or is it just... Scattered? You have to look at each county, each county coach, county. yes. Okay. Okay, so we'll get started um, and what we'll start with is uh, the Interregional um, Transportation Improvement Program. So I'll give a brief overview. So Caltrans is proposing to delete a total of $192.4 million in programming. Some projects funded for pre-construction only are being closed out with an accounting for funds already spent. Uh, they are deleting some projects that were funded only for pre-construction. They're proposing to delete some projects where they had construction, um, but they just don't have enough room. So they're having to prioritize. They are not proposing any delays at this time to the last two years. Um, they have uh, proposed some changes in the rail where they're combining projects together for capitalized maintenance and um, deleting a siding and putting the funds on another siding that's a, a higher priority. And so we'll leave it up to the department. Uh, 
Okay. 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 Well, thank you, Laurel Well, Commissioners. My name is Kurt Scherzinger. I'm here with Caltrans to talk about our revised ITIP. Our revised ITIP, as you can see up, our revised Interregional Transportation Improvement Program, otherwise known as the ITIP, we assembled as an amendment to the original ITIP presented in December. So um, I'm just going to take a couple minutes to go over the purpose of the ITIP and, and some other background. Um, and under statute, this is the purpose of the ITIP, to improve projects to improve state highways, projects to improve intercity passenger rail system, and to improve the interregional movement of people, vehicles, and goods. So consistent with state statute, Funding to the STIP is split in the 75-25 percentage formula is shown on here. Generally speaking, projects funded by the ITIP are those that emphasize improved mobility between urbanized regions, while projects funded with regional RTIP funds are those that improve mobility within the urbanized areas. That's just a generalization, though. In response to the recent drop in price-based excise tax projections, a, rev a revised STIP fund estimate was adopted that requires approximately, as well noted, $754 million worth of projects be deleted from the STIP. That's a lot. It's about a third of the remaining five-year STIP. It's like the worst I've ever seen it. So I assembled this graphic to kind of illustrate in a, in a visual way the problem that we're facing. So the red bars on this diagram, we, it's hard to, to see from the back, but these are fiscal years um, starting with the 15-16 fiscal year that we're currently wrapping up on the left and then the future fiscal years on the right all the way out to the 2021. So the red bars represent the revenues as now forecast. These are the lowered revenues as now forecast. The blue bar represents the dollar value of the existing program project in the STIP, the 2014 STIP. Those amounts were arrived at two years ago or so when um, the thought was that the funding to transportation was a little better um, based on different assumptions. So um, you can kind of see that the, the problem here is that we have more projects in a given fiscal year than there's money. So um, as, as a consequence, something's not going to get built and it just simply has to slip due to lack of timely funding. And that's what the yellow represents here. But unfortunately, we still have projects that were planned to be funded. All those in blue were planned to be funded anyway, and those get added to the, the projects that slip, and so then there's a, there's a liability issue, which then slips to the following year, and now we have this um, problem where, again, there's not enough money. The red bar, again, represents the amount of money to, to fund the, the, the slippage that, can't be, that was expected to be funded earlier. But then we have Though these planned projects that were, were thought to be delivered, and now we have this enormous cascade of, of slippage, which just becomes astronomical um, visually, and ultimately it ends up with um, um, that, which is a, um, the, the amount between the top of the red bar and the top of the yellow bar represents the $754 million of projects that um, can't get funded within the the five-year STIP time frame, and so there's no choice left but to um, take those out because the law says that the STIP has to be fiscally constrained to available revenues, and, and that's the, the job here. So we all have to participate in the solution. So the department um, came forward with our revised ITIP, and um, we, um, we've identified projects collectively valued at about a little more than 25 percent of the, of the challenge. Um, Projects don't come in even 25% overall overarching increments, and so we identified about 192 million, a little bit more of, of ITIP to, to delete. So to compare, the December ITIP proposed about $600 million worth of projects over the five-year time frame, and then after taking away $192 million, this leaves about $408 million left over that can proceed, but a lot of that, of course, has to get delayed because there's not enough timely revenues. But uh, the outcome is it's a 32% cut in, um, in projects. So to get there, we propose to delete every single um, project where construction dollars aren't fully committed right now or program, which is really our pre-construction groups of projects. 
But um, really what we're telling the design team is pencils down. We're taking away what you haven't spent, le uh, you know, what's left over. But this really wasn't enough, so we also had to look at projects that are programmed for construction. And this really cuts to the heart of it. It's really, you know, not, not good to do that. And, um, but we, we still have to do that. So um, we're deleting several, proposing to delete several projects programmed for construction. We looked at uh, things like, um, you know, how far along were they in the delivery and um, projects in the outer years of the STIP that hadn't proceeded too far were, were the obvious things to look at and projects that are about ready to go to construction today. Um, you know, as a wise use of taxpayer dollars, we thought those would be the best to, to keep. Um, and then also we looked at uh, other considerations like what would be the potential for the, a project to get other kinds of money. And there's this Federal FAST Act coming up and, you know, you know maybe, maybe some of those would, would qualify. So, um, you know, honestly, this wasn't an easy job and it's not trivial. So we certainly support the, the concept that's been discussed in, in general terms of um, prioritizing projects, projects for, um, that are removed from the STIP due to lack of timely funding to be um, prioritized for being returned back to the STIP someday if, if there's a way that can be done. So this, this uh, is really the, the, uh, our amendment to our, our proposal from last December. These projects that we're proposing to delete um, to meet our share of, of the cut. The top group of projects up there, those, are, um, those projects don't have construction dollars identified or they're just partially identified. And so it really didn't make sense to just continue to deliver um, design package and then you know, for a project that doesn't have construction anyway, when we're also going to have to delete other projects that do have construction. And which is the bottom group of projects? Those are the construction, the projects that do have construction dollars. But to get to our share of the, of the cut, we, we're proposing to remove those. And on the right, I just kind of want to note that um, we've, we've tried over the years, and I think we've done a pretty good job, and we have a good relationship with many of our partners for the, where they put a lot of their STIP dollars, or RIP dollars, on these projects. So when we make a conscious decision to, to, to do pencils down or walk away from a project temporarily, it does affect those those partners and their RIP dollars. And, and I know that most of our partners are from counties that don't have measure or other funds, and so it kind of drives the decision to um, also to remove those RIP dollars from the STIP as well. So when we look at it from that perspective, the interregional program, when you look at the ITIP being cut and the RTIP dollars, uh, it adds up to about 38% of the overarching um, um, amount of the 754 that has to be cut. So that's, that's our amendment, and this really concludes my presentation. Any questions on this? Commissioner Inman. Well, I'm going to try again. If you'll go back to your chart uh, that sure. shows the... Oh, oh, the... Um, dramatic. That one? Yes. So my point is this. We would still be having new projects to add to our list of things we need to do in 19 and 20. And the way this visual it's really more of a problem. And even though it's not in this cycle, I'm suggesting that you add a dash line up above those two to guesstimate what maybe we would have thought we needed because we're not gonna take a time out and say we don't need anything and we can have catch up time. Sure. So I, I think this is misleading in terms of the magnitude of the problem because I don't think we've ever had a year in our combined history when we don't have some projects we need to do. Well, so. well I, I think everybody would agree that the, even, a, even a good step funded at six to seven hundred million a year is really not enough to, to meet the needs of the state. Okay, but make some assumption. Use STIP yeah. for the last ten years or something and give me a dashed purple box on those two sure. uh, to really show the magnitude. And then when you said you looked at your criteria, if there was possibly for other funding, in terms of the fast lane applications, it's not going to sit well for us with our partners in DC who are making those decisions if we say we're backfilling. It was not the intent of Congress nor DOT. And I'm afraid, I'm passionate about California getting their fair share. And they have said repeatedly at their freight round tables, we just had three in the state and a number of DC meetings that those 
applications were not to backfill other dollars. So as we're presenting our applications, I would be hesitant to say we're trying to make up other gaps because I think what will happen is other projects around the U.S. might get picked over ours. That's a good point. Well noted. Commissioner R. And then Ms. Jansen. Um, on this chart, uh, so you know, this is how we arrived at the 754. But I'm looking at the two middle years where you got, uh, is there gonna, just from a cash flow standpoint, are we gonna run into a problem having enough money to move all those projects along in years three and, f uh, what, one, two, one, two, three, four, and two and three, I guess. Well, of course, so that's why the projects just have to be deferred, so no spending can occur on many of these projects until, um, for those that so do get to stay in the state. they're but they're not actually gonna move until you. Okay. Well, they'll have to slip to future years, yeah. and then the money can be spent in, in, in later years, so. Yeah. So, um, but projects that are, are underway now that are being um, designed on, and, and, and those, those, that activity can still continue because those are, those are dollars that aren't, aren't shown in, in, this, in this diagram necessarily. They were um, allocated earlier. So this is, we're only talking about, this diagram is only really illustrating those dollars that are um, seeking an allocation in, in a current or future year. Could you go forward to the, to the actual project list? No problem. Um, it would have been helpful if you to subtotal each one of those categories, just so you can kind of, because it looks to me, I mean, these projects on the bottom, how far along are they in, in construction at this point? None of them have started construction. Um, most of them are um, two or three years to start of construction. Okay, so there's nothing that they've actually been moving dirt yet? No. Or you have to shut it down? No, okay. no, we wouldn't do that. Well... At least we don't have to do don't that. Don't ever say that. <laughs> yeah. We came close to that a few years we ago. We did, right. Um, okay. Because it looks, I mean, those, if you had, that's a lot of, uh, those are all big projects. Those are mostly small projects. Correct. So the projects in the top, there's, there's um, either, either almost nothing has been done yet to start the design work, or very little has been done in those projects to start the design work, and there's no construction funds yet identified. So the thought is why... Right. Start those and spend valuable state resources, and and maybe not work and maybe not have to delete that sixth construction project. That, right. That's not shown here. That makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Oh. Okay. I, I would just like to mention uh, in, uh, Commissioner Inman mentioned the the dash purple line. So I think that adds about six hundred million. Uh, per year in those last two years that we would otherwise normally have had to program right. that we've lost. So it'll make it really, really very obvious. It'll be super tile. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm not sure about the FAST Act and the supplanting of funds, uh, but the STIP officially is state only funded. So I don't know if, if that would be an impact um, for the FAST Act. Because, you know, the STIP, really the money for the STIP is the 44% of the price base. So officially it's state only funding. So I don't know if that will impact that or not. Well, we just, you know, Congress was pretty clear when they passed the FAST Act yeah. that those, first of all, it took us forever to ever get any freight funding, and this is the first time ever, so everybody's watching. And they were very adamant about the fact that this was not for regions to just backfill uh, and replace other dollars. So I just, I'm hesitant as our applications are all due shortly. And the NOFA came out on the congestion and technology. Another NOFA came out yesterday. So, you know, they're pushing hard to get their work done at DOT with this first cycle. And I, I don't want us to do anything that hurts us. Just chart. Yeah, how, you know, going back to what Commissioner Inman was saying in, in that other chart. Um, you know, how we frame this so that the public understands is really important. And, uh, you know, we even have legislators who don't get it, uh, clearly from some of the letters that we've been receiving. Um, I think, you know, one way to be able to just simply explain this right now is we are, we are doing triage. 
basically. And right. if you add the purple, that would have been projects that we would have ordinarily uh, programmed just to, just to have a minimal health program. I mean, we all know STIP is, is underfunded and anemic. So that purple would give us just enough projects to maintain like a, you know, getting on the elliptical once a week kind of thing instead of every yes. day. Yeah. But so, I mean, we have to be able to explain it in those kinds of terms so people can see that, you know, there's no monkeying around with these numbers and these projects. Yeah. No, I get your point. And I think historically the STIP has been six, seven hundred million a year. So, but all of us in this room would probably agree that's too low. And that's considered a good budget. Well, but even, even in the, yeah. the status quo, mm -hmm. e even with the status quo, if it's 600 or 700 million, so split the difference at 650, if you add, you know, 1.3 billion, you're not mm -hmm. 750 million dollars no. uh, at risk. You're really a couple billion dollars at mm -hmm. risk in terms of nice. not being able to keep up, even what? with the lower amount. And commissioners, I would also point out that when we did consider, when you did consider the uh, revised fund estimate, uh, there's been some suggestion that the commission created a, 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 a bad news story in order to put pressure on the legislature to uh, adopt uh, additional funding. The fact of the matter is that I thought the commission was quite prudent in terms of considering the options that were available to it. Uh, with respect to the revisions in the 2016 fund estimate, they took a, a relatively moderate approach to determining which, uh, how much money was going to be cut out. So this picture could, could have been significantly worse if the Commission had taken a, 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 a more uh, a liberal uh, view of the money that's available. But the Commission, again, was, I think, very prudent in deciding let's take a moderate course and, and uh, let's really make this as accurate as we can. And so what the information you see here is very real. Okay. Thank you. Other questions of, uh, of the, the department? Very good. Uh, Ms. Jansen. Okay, uh, commissioners, uh, next up on the agenda is the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. MTC covers nine Bay Area counties, Alameda, uh, that's, and if you want, I can give you the page numbers, that's on two and three. Contra Costa is on pages nine and 10. Marin on 28. Napa is on 39 and 40. San Francisco, 54. San Mateo, uh, 57 and 58. Santa Clara, 60 and 61. Solano, 68, and Sonoma, 69. So as a whole, MTC is proposing to delete $71.3 million. They're proposing uh, multiple projects for deletion, a uh, freeway performance initiative in Alameda and Contra Costa, the uh, bike pedestrian access to the Bay Bridge East Band, uh, BART station modernization, uh, Hercules Railroad Station, Airport Boulevard Rehab in Napa, um, uh, complete streets project in San Francisco, and the Route 101 Adobe Creek Bike Ped Bridge in Santa Clara. They're also proposing three new projects, Marin Sonoma Narrows, Segment B2, uh, Lombard Street Vision Zero in San Francisco, and um, the Route 101 HOV Hot Lanes in San Mateo. They have not proposed any delays to the last two years of the STIP period. So we have Ann Richman, uh, Director of Programming and Allocations for the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. Welcome. Thank you. Is this on? It's on. Okay, great. Good morning. Thank you very much. Ann Richman with uh, the Programming and Allocations section at MTC. Thank you very much for the opportunity to testify on the Bay Area's 2016 RTIP this morning. Um, as, as I think you are aware, MTC approved our original RTIP in December and amended it uh, actually just this week to reflect the revised fund estimate calling for project reductions. Um, before I get to the bad news, which you've already summarized, of the delays and reductions, um, I'd like to highlight the region's delivery record in the past few years since the <coughs> adoption of the 2014 STIP. The regions worked very closely with our partners, including the congestion management agencies, Caltrans, and the Commission to successfully deliver a number of important projects in the STIP. These projects have included the Highway 84 expressway widening in Livermore in Alameda County, AC Transit's bus rapid transit project in Alameda County, the I-80 San Pablo Dam Road interchange project in Contra Costa County, 
the Jameson Canyon Widening Project in Napa and Solano counties, and a number of segments on the US 101 Marin Sonoma Narrows project. These projects would not have been possible without our TIP funding. The revised 2016 STIP fund estimate calls, of course, for a hefty change in programming that proved very painful for the region. And while MTC's revised RTIP still strives to achieve our goals for greenhouse gas reductions mandated by SB 375 and in our region's adopted sustainable community strategy, the reduction of STIP funding does definitely impact important traffic congestion relief, transit, and active transportation projects throughout the region. MTC's RTIP revision identified $71.3 million in programming for delay to a future unfunded year outside of the current 2016 STIP period. Of this amount, $35 million, or about half, affect state highways and roads, $17 million, or about 23% affect transit, and $19 million, or about 27% affect bike and pedestrian projects. As noted, there are seven projects proposed for deletion, uh, a regional project to improve bike and pedestrian connectivity to the east span of the Bay Bridge, BART station modernization program, I-680 SR4 interchange in Contra Costa County, Napa County Airport Boulevard rehabilitation, San Mateo County um, improvements to State Route 92-101 interchange, Santa Clara County, US 101, Adobe Creek Pedestrian and Bicycle Bridge, and Solano County, Jepson Parkway improvements. So uh, hits throughout the region. These projects remain priorities for the region, and we hope that they will return for funding as part of the 2018 STIP. As part of your action, the region supports language in CTC's adopting STIP resolution that would prioritize deleted projects for programming in the 2018 STIP and would exempt these deleted projects from meeting various performance review criteria that would normally be required for new projects. Furthermore, MTC is not standing by while tax revenues fall short. Our commissioners have met with members of our legislative contingent and stressed the importance of a fix to the broken price-based excise tax, the results of which we just went through in the previous presentation. <coughs> Our commission supports various proposals by Assemblymember Frazier, Senator Bell, and Governor Brown that would solve the STIP crisis. And the reduction of STIP funding has not gone unnoticed by the Bay Area press and media. We have a handout that our commissioners have used in meeting with legislators. I believe uh, Kenneth Cow just provided copies to you all. After these deferrals, the MTC region has about $168 million in programming remaining compared to the original $240 million prior to the deferrals. Of the remaining amount, most of it will go to benefit the state highway system, some to transit, namely the BART extension to San Jose, about 10% to streets and roads, and a small amount for pedestrian, bike projects, and planning activities. Finally, MTC is proposing three net zero changes for new project programming located in the region. San Francisco currently has $1.9 million programmed to the Chinatown Broadway Complete Streets project. San Francisco has been able to deliver this project using local funds and therefore is requesting to move the $1.9 million to the Lombard Street Vision Zero Safety Project. The Lombard Street project also received funds from the 2015 Regional Active Transportation Program and will construct important improvements on the non-twisty part of Lombard Street in San Francisco. Next, in San Mateo County, 17.4 million is currently programmed to the US 101 Willow Interchange Project. San Mateo is choosing to use local measure funds to deliver the construction capital portion of the Willow Project, leaving $8 million for construction support. San Mateo is also requesting advancing the project to fiscal year 17 as the project will be ready to list before the end of the current fiscal year. San Mateo further requests that the remaining 9.4 million be programmed to the pre-construction phases of the US 101 HOV Express Lane project, which would add lanes from Santa Clara County line to Interstate 380. Finally, the region is requesting deprogramming 31 million in STIP funds from two projects, the I-80 Freeway Performance Initiative Project in Alameda County and the I-680 Route 4 Interchange Project in Contra Costa County. These projects, uh, the 680 Route 4 project has a number of phases, I should point out, and these projects would be delivered with other funds. Instead, the region is proposing to program the $31 million to the US 101 Marin Sonoma Narrows project, segment B2, phase two, in Sonoma County. Programming of the Marin Sonoma Narrows project is the region's highest priority for programming after PPM and 803090 projects. 
And I should add that Suzanne Smith, the Executive Director of the Sonoma County Transportation Authority, is here today if there are additional questions on the Marin Sonoma Narrows project. So in conclusion, thank you very much for consideration of our RTIP. The Bay Area is certainly committed to the projects in our proposed programs and will continue to fight for a legislative solution to the STIP crisis. I'd be glad to answer any specific questions you may have. Thank you, Ann. Before we get into questions, I'd also point out that uh, Bruce Abernathy is here. Bruce, where are you in the event that you have questions uh, related to the Valley Transportation Authority? Commissioners? Commissioner Arp? Go ahead. Commissioner Inman. So, Suzanne, do you want to share uh, the volume of exports that go through your uh, project there that you shared with Federal Highways yesterday? I think it's good to talk about. Commissioner Suzanne Smith, Executive Director of Sonoma County Transportation Authority. Um, thank you for the question. Yesterday we had the opportunity to participate in the freight roundtable in the Bay Area and uh, highlighted the 101 corridor has kind of two components when it comes to freight. Uh, Highway 101, the primary uh, corridor that, that is used for hauling our agricultural products wine primarily, um, but an important market for, uh, for our county and for, uh, we think, the rest of the country. Um, but uh, also burgeoning, hopefully burgeoning freight service that has started up uh, along the improved uh, Northwest, Northwestern Pacific Rail Line. So we're working in partnership in that corridor to deliver rail and uh, highway fixes. The project that, that was mentioned uh, that's included in the proposed step um, is new technically, but not new in that it's part of the Marin Snow Monero's project that this commission has been very helpful and supportive of with, with bond funding and other sources. This phase would actually allow a significant portion of the freeway to be opened uh, with the third lane in each direction that without this project uh, will not occur because there's a gap. So thank you. Commissioner Art. Um, on the list of deleted projects in Alameda, it doesn't look like it to me, but I just wanted to verify there's none of these projects uh, were receiving uh, funds from measure, from the last measure, uh, the sales tax measure increase, were they? Um, in Alameda County, I believe that's correct. I'm not sure. Kenny, do you know about the SR84? Um, that's where we received some measure BB money, but that completed the funding plan, so now they, they definitely need this to money to uh, go to construction. Okay, thank you. Um, Bruce, did you want to add anything from, for Santa Clara County? Not necessarily any questions on the program. Okay, thank you for being here. All right, Ann, thank you. Oh, thank you. Commissioner Art. So, uh, looking at the sum total of MTCs, Cuts. I may have to refer to our staff for this. How does it uh, how does it align with what their pro rata share of the one of the 754 uh, billion? I think a uh, million. I mean. Yeah, I think they're about I think about 20 million short. Okay. And um, may I say, Ann, that this uh, handout is is excellent. Uh, I'm going to talk to you offline to see if we can't. Uh, use this. Certainly, be happy very, to very, talk about that. Very, uh, very well put together. Thank you. Well, plus I think you had some social media chatter talking a little bit about what happens when we don't have adequate funding, right? This yes, week? there has been some, yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ann. Next we'll move on to El Dorado County. Sharon Scherzinger is the Executive Director of the El Dorado County uh, Transportation Commission. Uh, it's a family affair. You heard from Kurt earlier, and uh, this family is totally committed to transportation here. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, Kurt, real quick, say, yeah. We can have a staff. Yeah, just a then, quick. Uh, Quick comment, they are on page 12 of your red book if you want to look. They're really not proposing any changes other than respreading their PPM. I just mentioned that we really don't have a target for 2021 for PPM, so it shouldn't be there. Go ahead. All right, well, good morning, and, and it's been a family affair for at least 30 years. So. <laughs> um, good morning, Can Commissioner. Can you help me get that chart changed? Yeah. <laughs> 
we'll get that handled for you. <laughs> um, Sorry. Okay. All right, good morning, Commissioner Arp, Inman, um, Director Kempton. I'd also like to express my appreciation to your staff, um, Susan, Laurel, and Teresa, for their help in putting together um, our RTIP this time. Um, we are fully appreciative of the economic challenges that we're facing in the transportation industry. Um, EDCTC has met with all our elected officials numerous times. We had um, Assemblymember Frazier up to El Dorado County for a day, um, showed him the projects, met with the engineering staff. Um, we also have met with um, Senator Bell and um, communicated with the governor's office on the issue. So, and we continue to do so. Um, the project that I bring before you, what I'll do in, in respect to your time this morning, is talk about ways that it might be different from other things that you're going to hear about today. Um, this project is called the Western Placerville Interchanges. It's a project um, on Highway 50, and um, it's been in the planning stages for over 20 years in our regional transportation plan, as well as SACOG's Metropolitan Transportation Plan. It has been in our RTIPs since 2012, so 2012, 2014, and again in um, 2016. Um, the driving force behind this project is that in historic um, Placerville there is a courthouse that is almost 100 years old that is no longer safe to transport the prisoners. Um, it has mold in it. There are a lot of problems with it. Um, and the state courts is actually closing it. And so what they're wanting to do, they've completed the environmental documents, is they're moving the courthouse next to the jail. And before they can do that, we have to have the infrastructure in being water, electricity, and transportation. And so this project, which includes a ramp from Highway 50 to the courthouse, as well as a park and ride lot, um, bike and pedestrian facilities, and the frontage road, are what provide that multimodal connectivity to that new courthouse facility. Um, in the second page, I put a packet um, up there with your, at your place. And on the second page in the packet, there is um, a map, a fold-out map in there. And just to kind of get you oriented, I'm a geography major, so I have to do this. I can't help myself. Um, so you can see there's a, there's a diamond there, a red diamond. That's where the courthouse will be next to the jail. Directly across from that is the county government center, um, the fairgrounds, um, the library. And then to the east is downtown Placerville. And to the west is the commercial corridor of Missouri Flat. So with all these multimodal projects, it connects those things up. It fills that gap. So when we had our commission meeting in um, January, when the, fund, the new fund estimate came out, um, we went back to the engineering staff, the, the one city engineer with Placerville, as well as the consultant team, and we said, OK, we only have one project in the RTIP this time around, which is the Western Placerville Interchange. Could we break this up into smaller pieces? Um, could we delay it? And the challenge we have is that Highway 50, it's like a stair step. Highway 50 is at the bottom. The ramp would come next. The park and ride lot would come above that. The frontage road and the sidewalks and the bike pass would come above that. And so when you build them all together and do the grading all together, because it's on the side of a hill, then it's cheaper. So if we break it apart, we don't have enough funding either with our CMAC funding, our federal earmark funding, or our PEMISIA funding to construct those other pieces of the project. So that's been our challenge, and, and that's why our recommendation is to keep this um, project intact um, as it is here. And you can see that on the, on the second um, map in the packet. Um, there's a picture of the grading that needs to be done for the project, as well as identifying the different components of the project and, and how they're funded. So you can see the challenge um, for us in terms of breaking that apart. Um, these projects also serve as you could connect with the bike path all the way from Missouri Flat up to Apple Hill, which is a, over 10 miles. This gap would be closed. Um, the park and ride there lot there would serve um, 240 trips per day to our Sacramento commuter um, ride lot. 
and then it connects to the rest of the government facilities. Um, we've worked closely with SACOG. This is part of the sustainable community strategy for the region as a whole. And we look forward to helping them implement that on time and within schedule. I've also included within your packet um, the letter from the Judicial Council of California about the courthouse and how this project is critical in terms of funding um, to get the $79 million courthouse built there. Um, the building of that courthouse along with the building of the ramps would create 1,700 construction jobs. And then we also have the letter in the packet from um, El Dorado Transit which um, is indicating the funding and the ridership that would be obtained um, by their participation in this as well as the STIP. And then um, lastly, in terms of um, commitments kept, um, directly opposite of this project is um, the um, on-ramp, westbound on-ramp, which was built with the CMIA funds and completed in 2013. <coughs> So between these two projects, they will serve the government center as well as, as the new courthouse facility um, in Placerville. So that concludes my presentation. Do you have any questions for me? Commissioner Randa. So what will you do or what will they do uh, if they are not able to proceed with the new courthouse? How are they doing the work around right now? Right now, the, the courthouse is not scheduled for construction now. It's, it's scheduled for construction in the upcoming year. And so we need to have, we, this is for construction funding for 1617 for the ramp. Okay, what are they doing today if the building isn't The building currently, um, the courthouse, um, they have part of it in the county government center, which they're renting from the county, and then part of it is in the existing courthouse. So they can use part of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Commissioner R. Was there any um, on all the bike path part of this project? Was there any uh, uh, consideration of pursuing AT funds for that? Um, we did. We did apply for um, ATP, and actually, those parts are funded with um, CMAC funding. Okay. Sharon? Okay, thank you. Next we have Rachel Morricone, uh, who's the RTIP program manager for Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Authority. While you're coming up, uh, uh, Ms. Jansen, can you give us a little? Yeah. Uh, Santa Cruz is located on page 62 and 63 of your, of your book, the red book. Santa Cruz is proposing no deletions. They are, propo they are proposing no delays to 2021. Only one project is being proposed for delay for 1920. They are proposing state-only funds on 11 of their projects. Rachel. Good morning, commissioners. Rachel Morricone from the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission. Our executive director, George Dongero, regrets that he was unable to make today's meeting um, and asks that I read the following. Honorable CTC commissioners, CTC staff, and Caltrans, the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission recognizes that the California Transportation Commission is facing unprecedented challenges during this fiscal crisis and appreciates the efforts <coughs> that your staff has made to communicate with the regions and ensure that transportation projects continue to be delivered to the public. We are committed to work with the CTC, its staff, our state legislators, and our local community to raise the funds needed to operate and maintain our transportation system. The STIP is one of the very few funding sources available for addressing capital um, needs in Santa Cruz County. With very few state or federal transportation funding programs available to our county, we depend on the STIP, and the severe drop in STIP funding is a very serious issue. The RTC's 2016 RTIP includes approximately $24 million of, for 13 projects that are carried over from prior STIP periods. Some of these projects have been in the works for as long as 10 years and are very close to be ready to be delivered. Um, and this drop in STIP funding is very um, unfortunate. The RTC approved STIP funds for these projects following a very extensive public participation process. Anyone that's familiar with our county knows that we have a very engaged citizenry there. And it was only through thoughtful evaluation, deliberation, and a lot of compromise that these projects were initially selected. 
These projects implement the region's regional transportation plan and SES and rep are representative of the broad multimodal transportation needs and priorities in Santa Cruz County. They preserve our existing transportation facilities, will help reduce congestion, increase safety, fill gaps in our bicycle and pedestrian networks, and increase access to transit and our robust agricultural product industry. They also are leveraging $17 million worth of federal funds, developer fees, local sales tax revenues, and community donations even for several projects. All of those funds are at risk if we do not have the STIP funding to back them up. In recognition of the difficult task now facing the CTC to delay projects and rescind funding previously approved for projects, the RTC has worked with our project sponsors and delayed over 80% of the funds that are programmed in Santa Cruz County to later years. The RTC understands that because there is a significant backlog of needs that the CTC is unable to offer us our unprogrammed county share balance this cycle as well. And so we have not proposed any new projects. The RTC requests that the CTC incorporate projects into the 2016 STIP as shown in the hearing book. We recognize that the drop in gas tax revenues has left transportation agencies at all levels struggling. We are deferring maintenance of essential infrastructure and delaying projects that are needed to provide safe access to jobs, schools, services, and the other places we travel. The RTC board and its um, staff have been meeting with our state legislative representatives, urging them to address the funding shortfalls on a statewide level. We recognize that state revenues are unpredictable and unreliable, however, and we are working very closely with our community, with the assistance in part of Jim Arp's own staff, to place a local sales tax, um, half cent sales tax measure on the November 2016 ballot so that we are less dependent on state revenues. Um, this isn't from George's statement, but I just wanted to add one of the challenges that our board had was we, we can't volunteer projects for deletion right now. We can't say to the public, we don't actually need this project, so this project doesn't need to be done, and then at the same time be asking them to dig into their own pockets to raise um, tax funding. But that was a major conversation topic at our board's meeting um, and the reason that we are not proposing any projects for deletion in this step. As you develop your recommendations for the 2016 STIP, we urge the CTC to consider regional priorities, which are based on extensive public outreach. While categories such as local road and active transportation projects fall towards the bottom of the allocation priorities established by the CTC for the fiscal year 15-16 allocation plan, we appreciate the CTC's efforts to look more holistically at the transportation network as an integrated multimodal system that considers the wide range of access and mobility needs in our state. We also ask that the CTC consider county share balances and advances as you're considering which projects to delete. Finally, thank you for con your consideration of the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Improvement Program. Sincerely, George Dondero. I also just wanted to make one comment on the staff notes in the book item. It notes that um, PPNO 1968 cannot be deleting a prior year component. We have looked at our other revenue funding sources available for the Mar Vista bicycle and pedestrian overcrossing and are proposing to utilize our region's share of regional surface transportation program funds to um, move forward with the environmental phase and to those funds were originally programmed for construction and to instead move the, that 500,000 in STIP funding that's currently programmed for the PAED phase out to construction so that we would just be moving those funds, delay, delaying them given the um, extreme shortfall that we're facing this year, but also given the large volume of community interest in this project <coughs> that provides ac access to an elementary school. Questions from the commission? Commissioner Randall. So you're proposing no cuts? We are proposing, we cannot volunteer any projects. There are no projects that are not <coughs> needed as you so, so stated in our county. You kind of put us in a position of proposing them for you? Our board is unable to come to consensus about any projects that are able to be deleted. Well, if all of your colleagues stood up and said the same thing, mm -hmm. uh, we appreciate we that we were... others who had advances in the past have proposed deletions. 
absolutely. Well, we kind of thought that this process we were going through of everybody trying to figure out and prioritize was a better, a better method. But when we have partners say, cut the other guy and don't cut any of mine, it makes it a little bit hard. Understandably. Other questions? All right, Rachel, thank you very much. Next, we're going to hear from SACOG and uh, Matt Carpenter, the Director of Transportation Services, and Ms. Fabila. SACOG covers four counties Sacramento, which is located on pages 48 and 49, Sutter, page 71, Yolo, page 80, and Yuba, page 81. As a whole, SACOC is proposing to delete 11.465 million from the region. They are proposing to delete five projects. The I-5 HOV lane sound wall, Route 51 ramp meters, Route 51 northbound transition lanes, and 39 CNG replacement buses in Sacramento County. In Yolo County, they are proposing to delete the Village Parkway extension, and the Power Line Road Safe Routes to School project in Yuba County. They are proposing three new projects sure. in Sacramento County. The, the J Street Art and Way Corridor improvements, the Cap Capital Southeast Connector, and the Power Inn Road improvements. No delays are proposed to the last two years. Well, good morning, Commissioners. I'm Matt Carpenter, Director of Transportation Services at SACOG, and I'm here with a lead analyst, Clint Holtzen, who worked on our, our RTIP. Um, we just really do appreciate this opportunity to brief you this morning on our resubmitted in our tip and I just want to start by acknowledging the, the help and assistance we've already been receiving from CGC management and staff in this very difficult time for all of us. We appreciate the patience as we try to work forward on figuring out what we can move forward. Um, our resubmitted program projects represent still a broad range of multimodal investments, though we did have to look very carefully where we could um, delay or uh, put off a project. The projects that remain strongly support are the implementation of our long-range transportation plan. And just last month, um, our SACOG board did adopt our new Metropolitan Transportation Plan and Sustainable Community Strategy. This plan um, meets both our ambitious greenhouse gas reduction targets while offering strong benefits. Benefits that you see reflected in our RTIP projects that both help goods movement, reduce congestion at key bottlenecks, and improves access and mobility throughout the region. Our RTIP really does support the implementation of near-term investment priorities from that newly adopted plan. And what we've done in terms of locking together our STIP funds with um, federal funds is that we did, at the same time we did our, our update to the plan, we just completed a regional funding round that pools our STIP funds with federal dollars that come to the region. And through doing this, um, we, of course, found ways to um, very carefully look at ways to deliver these projects on a strategic path forward. Pooling these federal and state funds, of course, increases our options for project selection. And it really remained our focus on trying to focus our RTIP projects on those that are ready to, um, to deliver. Um, examples in our RTIP list include the Feather River Bridge in Yuba and Sutter County. And we believe that this strategy, evidence of its success, is our past success at project delivery. For example, in the last RTIP, we had $22 million in projects delivered with $10 million of STIP. Um, I will add that um, in order to organize to help optimize our matching our projects to our state and federal funds. We've done a lot of active discussions, both with local agencies in our region, as well as our Caltrans District 3. Um, and the focus here was to try to identify these projects that needed to move forward even with the reduced funding. In total, our resubmit RTIP reflects a net reduction of nearly $12 million from our prior submittal. And it, what it reflects in our total is a $200 million in total investments with nearly $80 million in STIP funds. All the projects still included in our TIP uh, meet several um, of the identified commission's allocation priorities for STIP funding. Uh, for example, there are projects that add strategic capacity to reduce congestion bottlenecks. A notable example is here in Sacramento County along the Capital City Freeway moving forward that important project. Also, some of these capacity projects and others in our, our TIP are along corridors with critical rehabilitation needs, including Hazel Boulevard and Green Valley. 
and many other projects offer important active transportation benefits that are being timed to coincide with time-sensitive investments. These include um, Power Inn Road in Sacramento County, Mace Boulevard in Davis, and Old Florentown improvements also in Sacramento County. I will add that in addition to the importance of the projects in SACOG's four-county RTIP submittal, that we do want to add um, echo our support at SACOG for the El Dorado County Transportation Commission's proposal. Um, SACOG, as you know, is a six-county MPO, and our planning is, is done in close partnership with Placer and El Dorado counties. Um, the Western Placerville Interchange Project has also emerged through the SACOG planning process, an important regional investment, and we believe it is important that the STIP funds could still be secured for that project. Um, I'm available for any questions. Yeah. Questions from Mr. Carter. Thank you. Commissioner R. So is Placer County part of SACOG? I thought yes. it was. Yes, so absolutely. I'm just trying to figure out where they are in this whole thing. They've got a, they've mm -hmm. got a page here, but there's no, there's no presentation. They're not making any changes. Yes, as far as I know, they do not have any projects that are in the, the, the RTIP. They, they did the, not the propose PPM. any changes except for their respreading PPM. Right. And they have only one project in Placer, which is a $3 million on the rail, and they're not proposing a change. They do their own separate RTIP, um, which is why they're not included in the SACOG one. Okay. Other questions from the commission? All right, Matt, thank you very much. Good, thank you. Next, we're going to move on to Monterey County. <coughs> Debbie Haley, executive director, is here. Uh, Ms. Jansen. Yes, uh, Monterey County on pages 37 and 38 in your red book. They're proposing to delete 7 million overall uh, with a deletion of one project, South County Frontage Roads. Uh, they're moving some funds around on their expressway project. Uh, they don't have any delays proposed for the last two years, but they are proposing to respread their PPM throughout the five year period. Thank you, uh, Director Kempton and commissioners. Um, as you know, Monterey County has a strong track record of delivering um, STIP improvements on our state highway system. With your help and collaborating with Caltrans, and I know some of you have been to the ribbon cuttings, we've delivered a multi-million dollar program of highway improvements. So of course, it pains us to take a look at our list and have to make cuts to that. Um, as you know, until we bring our state funding system into the 21st century, we will not be able to continue these critical safety and highway capacity improvements. Um, so we appreciate your efforts to bring awareness to the state legislature. And um, we and our Central Coast Coalition partners have written letters. We just had a legislative day. We've been talking with some of our um, members who are at critical decision making points to urge them to adopt a significant transportation funding package that also will help shore up the STIP. And uh, otherwise, we're, we're not gonna bring them any salad or strawberries, so. <laughs> our, our TIP proposal emphasizes three goals. First of all, keep next year's construction projects on schedule. Um, both the Highway 1 operational improvements and Highway 68 Corral de Chiara intersection improvements are ready for construction. They'll be seeking allocations in August at the CTC meeting and at, at just $4.7 million for both projects, leveraging some local money as well. These improvements are a tremendously cost-effective way to provide strategic safety and traffic relief at key bottlenecks in our county. It would be extremely costly to delay construction of these projects at this late date. Our second goal has been to retain the projects that will leverage matching funding. Um, the $2 million in blessed replacement money will leverage $8 million in FTA funds so we can purchase 20 new buses. That's a great matching ratio. The $30.5 million for Highway 68 will leverage another $200 million in regional impact fees and tolls. We are in the middle of a level two traffic and revenue study um, regarding the tolling feasibility, and I do think from a public angle, um, if we're able to address the traffic diversion issues and provide a small um, local discount that people have um, begun to accept the notion that these safety and congestion relief improvements are, are important enough, and the tourists will mostly pay. Uh, the 18 and a half, just trying to see if we're all awake. Okay, the 18 and a half million dollars for the Rail to Salinas funding leverages another $40 million in state rail monies. In addition, the project is currently in design and is acquiring right away, and so we, we'll be moving ahead with that project. And our third goal is was to work cooperatively with the CTC. Um, our board of directors did make the, make the difficult decision to cut $7 million from our regional improvement program. We've also delayed additional funding. Um, we've cut our very important US 101 South County project. 
Um, we reduced money for our 156 improvements and delayed almost $11 million in funding as well. Um, it was not easy, but we wanted to make the cuts rather than have you do that. Um, I won't talk about our neighbors to the north. Um, meanwhile, I want to give you some good news. Uh, after an intense community involvement process, yesterday our board of directors adopted a 30-year, $600 million local transportation um, improvement plan for the November 2016 ballot. We're very excited about that. Um, a key selling point for that plan continues to be how we can leverage state and federal matching funds. So, um, of course, we know that we need state funds in order to be able to leverage them. Um, so we look forward to continuing our partnership with Caltrans and the CTC uh, to work together with the legislature to solve this funding crisis. Thank you. Questions from the commission? Uh, Debbie, I think that's an important point you make with respect to the leverage factor because so many of the local sales tax programs, the measure programs in the state do rely on state funding. And so when we talk about a hit of $754 million on the State Transportation Improvement Program, that is magnified many times over by virtue of the expectations of uh, leveraging those dollars from local and even federal money uh, in, in, in a number of cases. And so it is a very, very big problem that we're facing. So thank you for making that point. You're welcome. Next, uh, thank you. Next we will have uh, Trinity County, uh, Richard Tippett, uh, Executive Director of the Transportation Commission in Trinity County. Uh, uh, yes, uh, so Trinity County, uh, it's on pages 75 and 76 of your red book. Uh, Trinity is proposing to delete 1.5 million overall, deleting one project, Lewiston <coughs> Road Rehab, and also deleting construction from their Weaver Weaverville Road turnouts. These are the only two construction projects they have in the, in the <coughs> STIP right now. They are proposing an increase to PPM, which will exceed their maximum in, for the 2021 year. I don't, I don't see Rick. I, I don't see Rick uh, as well, um, so we'll okay. simply we'll take on. that input and move on. But I do want to point out one uh, fact, and that is that the Commission spends a lot of time going around the state and regularly schedules its meetings uh, at various locations in California. We don't often get out to the smaller rural counties, and uh, this Commission this past year did in fact hold a town hall in Trinity County and is planning to hold a town hall this year uh, in Butte County. Uh, and it's a way for the commission to get out to those rural counties and hear what the needs are of the smaller rural counties in the state. And appreciate the fact that our commissioners dutifully uh, show up uh, and, and attend these uh, town halls. Uh, and it's uh, a good way, as I say, to hear from the smaller counties. So next we have... Uh, well, we have I do have a question up in that uh, region. Do we have an estimate on the cost of the uh, slide? Was that last week when they had the big on, on slide up there? Three. There was a, the road was uh, badly damaged by the slide. I, I don't think we have any estimates, and I don't know if it occurred. Uh, they are working on it. I think there was another similar slide on State Route 121, if I'm not mistaken. Two, two very, uh, very bad uh, uh, results yeah. of, the, of the storms. Um, we can get you that information. No, I'm, I'm just curious because it kind of points out, you know, we can be penny wise and pound foolish sometimes too with our underfunding in terms of we have an emergency and, you know. Not to decry the need uh, because we have substantial needs, but uh, typically those kinds of projects are dealt with with emergency relief funding through the federal government uh, and, and or shop uh, contributions, but it does underscore every dollar that gets spent is another dollar that doesn't get spent someplace else. Uh, next we'll hear from Stanislaus County, uh, Jeanette Padela is here. Uh, Sure. Stanislaus County uh, is on page 70 of your red book. They are not proposing any deletions. Uh, they are proposing to combine two uh, Route 132 projects into one and delaying that from current year to 1819. And then they do have a delay also to 1920. Thank you, Laurel. Good morning, commissioners and staff. On behalf of the Stanislaus Council of Governments, I would like to thank the commission and staff for their continued leadership and partnership. SANCON continues to make every effort possible to assist the state with addressing the financial impacts to the 2016 STIP. When we became aware of the zero STIP fund estimate in 2015, a decision was made to assist the state by requesting the delay of approximately $19 million in STIP funding for its highest priority project, which is the State Route 132 West Freeway Expressway Phase 1. 
The project was delayed from fiscal year 15-16 to 18-19, where the project has an approximate $9 million STIP funds program. This delay is also included in our recently revised 2016 RTIP. Further delay would require updated environmental assessments and increased costs, which would put the project in jeopardy. Currently, Stancock has three regionally significant projects programmed in the STIF. Before you is the handout summarizing all of the three projects. And that handle also provides a visual of where those projects um, currently stand. The State Route 132 West project, which, as stated, is our highest priority project, will ultimately construct a four-lane freeway on a new alignment in Stanislaus County. Phase one will construct a two-lane expressway with full access control and grade separations at intersections between State Route 99 and State Route 132 at North Dakota Avenue. The State Route 132 corridor serves as a major access route for an increasing number of Central Valley commuters traveling to work. It is a major regional freight corridor, provides interregional connections, and functions as a connecting link between major freeway routes such as Interstate 580, Interstate 5, and State Route 99. This is a two-phase project. The funding being requested in fiscal year 1819 is for phase one, which is scheduled for completion in 2020. Next, the McHenry, widening the McHenry Avenue widening project proposes improvements to a corridor that serves as one of the only routes in or out of the county to the north. In the event this corridor becomes impassable due to infrastructure failure, an emergency, or unforeseen circumstance, the shortest detour is approximately 10 miles to the east. This corridor is currently a two-lane rural roadway, and the funding requested for construction would allow for the widening to include two through lanes in each direction and a dual left turn median. Stenkog is requesting this project be delayed from fiscal year 1718 to 1920. The total cost for the construction phase is approximately 10.2 million. The STIP funding being requested is 4.1 million, and Stanislaus County is leveraging the remainder with their local funds. The third significant project is phase two of the State Route 99 Pellendale Avenue interchange reconstruction. This is a two-phase project. Phase one is under construction and is on schedule for completion in 2017. This project includes the reconstruction of the Pellendale Avenue overcrossing, the State Route 99 on and off ramps in new, no, in new alignments, and construction of a southbound auxiliary lane. The project will regionally benefit the operational capacity of State Route 99 and the surrounding road network. As Modesto's Northern Gateway, the Pellendale Interchange has substantial local, regional, and interregional benefits beyond traffic relief. The funding being requested for phase two of the project will complete the intersection such that it will meet the standards to satisfy the Americans with Disabilities Act, the final approved project report, and final approved traffic operations report, allowing the city of Modesto to complete this project in 2020. The total cost of this project is approximately $60 million. Sankar requests the 2016 STIP funding in the amount of approximately $4.3 million to remain programmed in fiscal year 16-17 as this project is close to completion. Stancock appreciates your time and consideration of our 2016 STIP request and looks forward to your continued support. I'm available for questions. Questions from the commission? Commissioner Inman. Well, in terms of being fair, I'll just repeat my comments about you all not being able to help us figure out mm -hmm. deletions. We're between a rock and a hard place, so. We definitely understand, and I think the difficult decision between these three projects is our highest priority project has been in the works for over 50 years, and we're finally at the point where our environmental documents will be released to the public this summer. So we're on schedule. We now have um, the funding to fully fund that first phase. So then that one is a really challenging one to just um, delete and take off of our list. The second one is the Pellendale Interchange. Phase one is about 75% completed. And phase one is the um, largest component of the entire project. It received Prop uh, 1B funds, over 50 million Prop 1B funds. The rest was leveraged with local funding. And then the third project is the McHenry Avenue widening project, which is a big safety concern in our region. Um, it connects us with San Joaquin County, and again, it just has the two rural roadway there, and it really needs um, improvements because, as stated, in case that um, um, 
that roadway is uh, impassable because of the infrastructure failure. If there's a natural disaster, the closest uh, route um, out of that area is about 10 miles away. And so it was challenging for us to um, come up with one of the projects to del delete. Well, if it's tough for you, it's even tougher for us when our partners, and I like to think of all of us as a team, so it, it makes our job even harder. And these are tough decisions for everybody, I think. Yeah, we understand. Thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. Uh, we'll now move on to uh, the Shasta County Regional Translation Planning Agency. Dan Little, the Executive Director of the Shasta RTPA, is here. Teresa, Shasta is on page 64 of the Red Book. Shasta is not proposing any deletions. They are proposing a name change to two of their projects. No delays are proposed to the last two years either. And I'd like to just start off by correcting that. I'm Dan Little, Executive Director for the agency. What we did instead of a new RTIP submittal was just simply submitted a letter that our board reviewed and approved and it suggests projects for deletion and delay. And as a matter of fact, every single project in our RTIP is suggested for either a delay or a deletion. So uh, we're trying to do our share there. And, uh, and in that vein, I always wanted to say that I've come up here. This is, I think, my seventh uh, STIP hearing, and it's going to sound like a broken record. It's uh, like Groundhog Day standing up here. I'm always talking about the same project, Interstate 5, as, uh, as Commissioner Arp knows and uh, Director Kempton. We've been working on a Fix 5 partnership for several years, uh, <coughs> going on 15 years now. And the goal of that project was to focus on mainline Interstate 5, not the interstate. And at the time, 15 years ago, when the STIP was better, or good even, uh, we relied on the STIP to realize that goal of connecting uh, six lanes on Interstate 5 between Anderson and the city of Reading, an area that if not for interregional traffic and truck traffic, would be fine with the four lanes we have, and if not for our local traffic, would be fine with the four lanes we have. So we've been uh, steadfast in working on our partnerships for that project. But luckily, we didn't just sit on our hands and rely on STIP funds, so we've been very active in, uh, you name it, CMIA, Tiger Grants. We're looking at fast lane grants and the next step of Tiger Grants. And we've had some success with that, but we still have a gap left between Reading and Anderson. Believe it or not, in those 15 years, not one dime of STIP money has been spent, even though we've dedicated all of our RIP resources to it, not one dime has been spent on construction of an Interstate 5 project. We haven't been able to get it in line or get ITIP funds or any of that nature. But at the last STIP hearing and the STIP hearing before that, in the STIP, we've programmed just over $12 million for a segment of Interstate 5 that's a key to getting this bottleneck need met. The uh, and also, we've been working steadfastly in partnership with Caltrans. We're looking at shop asset management funds for another $15 million, which will basically complete about 80% of this gap, leaving us the rest to hopefully secure through fast lane grants or something to that effect. So what we have now is a project program for next year. We realize that that probably can't stick, but we are in the difficult position of it's our one big project. The other projects are just non-motorized projects, ATP match funds, and so on. What we're looking for, what we're asking the commission is, is to reward good behavior, good partnerships, uh, the selection of the good projects, the right projects, and, uh, and, and we know we might have to delay it one year. We hope that it's not more than one year. I'm an optimist. I look at Kirk's chart with all the delayed fundings, and I focus on that little blue space that shows a little bit of capacity. So I know we might have to delay a year. Um, if That would be good. If we delay it more than a year, we really put that shop matching funds in a predicament that really sets back this whole 15-year process for a project. It's a really good project that meets interregional needs. I don't have to go into what Interstate 5 is. Probably everybody in this room is driven on that. There's no parallel facility for a freeway. So if you want to get to Oregon with goods or people, that's it. That concludes my presentation. Uh, before I uh, ask the commissioners for any questions, uh, Dan, I wanted to point out that uh, it may be a discrepancy with respect to we did receive a letter from the, uh, from the uh, RTPA uh, suggesting priorities. However, the actual RTIP submittal was, did not make those changes. And so uh, we sort of have a, a roadmap provided by the region that will help staff in terms of looking at uh, 
uh, priorities uh, as we go through the process, but that's the that's the difference. Yeah, and we just simply didn't have time to submit a new RTIP and go through that public process. So this letter, our board's on board, and they're certainly willing to make all those concessions noted in the letter. So at least give us some insight. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You bet. Other questions from the commission? Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Move on now to Tehama County. Barbara O'Keefe, the executive director of the Tehama County Transportation Commission. Did you raise it? Yes. Uh, Tehima is located on page 74, 73 and 74 of, the, of your book. Tehima is not proposing deletions to their overall project program. <coughs> they are proposing to delete one, two projects. However, these deletions are offset by a new project and cost increases to construction for two projects, the Jelly Ferry Bridge and the Evergreen Road Bridge Project. Thank you. Good morning, Honorable Commissioners Arp and Inman, Executive Director Kinman, Kimpton, and Executive Director to be soon, Susan Branson, and awesome staff, Laurel and Teresa. I'm a little bit nervous this morning, so I'm going to start off with an icebreaker um, from Tom Hanks. He grew up in Los, Mon Los Molinos near um, State Route 99, and it's a quote from the League of Our Own. And he looked at his team and he said, baseball is supposed to be tough. That's what makes it great. He also said, women don't cry at baseball. <laughs> That's right. And good point. What's up? Big girls don't cry. <laughs> and it's not supposed to be this tough to deliver transportation projects. Um, fortunately, what makes it great is our leadership, our passion, and our team playing. And in December, I, our RTIP moved out 78% of the programming in this first fiscal year, the current year. In addition, that was six total projects. Only two projects were not delayed, PPNM and a demonstration project. In February, our revised ITIP deleted two local projects and added those funds to State Route 99 Phase 3. This augments the existing program, programming of $1.2 million in RIP, and it ensures ADA compliance and leverages previously completed projects and improvements from Prop 1B Aura, Tiger, you name it, we threw everything we had at it. We also are delaying two bridge projects in the amount of 2.1 million to the last two years of the STIP. We are reaching out to our legislators, and this concludes my presentation. Are there any questions? Any questions? Are we getting into semantics here? Or did we delay, delete or we didn't? We no? did delete two projects, two local projects, and we reprogrammed that money onto State Route 99 to ensure ADA compliance. Um, our county council is giving me some very rigid guidance on my discussion regarding ADA compliance. So we just want to make sure that that facility is compliant. Okay, well, I'm and not that project exactly was delayed. Sure where we stand. Yeah, they're, they're no, that's net, why I yeah. wanted to be very transparent. They're, is they're at net zero, but um, and I wasn't going to mention it, but I will. We are looking at one of their projects to see if we can find another source of funding, um, and that's we're still working on that one right now. Okay, so this is in a stay tuned kind of state? Or yes. <laughs> yes, we've pushed out everything we can, and we have some um, very good things working in process. Your staff is outstanding. How, how much time does a commissioner do for spending money we don't have? <laughs> <laughs> You're forbidden by law. All right, let's move on to uh, Calaveras County. Uh, Melissa Eves, the Executive Director of the Calaveras Council of Governments. Uh, Teresa. Uh, 
Calaveras County is located on page seven of your book. Calaveras is not proposing any deletions or delays to the last two years. They are proposing to decrease funds for construction and increase PSNE by the same amount for the Route 4 Wagon Trail Expressway. Thank you, commissioners and CTC staff, for this opportunity to present. My name is Melissa Eads, and I'm the executive director of the Calaveras Council of Governments. I am joined here today by members of our Calaveras Council of Governments Delegate Committee. We have Supervisor Debbie Pawnee, Supervisor Steve Kearney, our Calaveras Council of Governments Board Chair John Gomes, and our Policy Advisor Paul Stein. Also joining me here today are members of our project team, our project manager Matt Satow and Dave Cortez with Caltrans District 10. State Route 4 is a primary east-west expressway that connects Interstate 80 in the Bay Area to the Sierra Nevada mountains. It has been the number one priority project of our region for decades, with improvements that began in the 1990s and most recently in 2007 with the celebrated Tri-Counties Partnership. The project that remains, the State Route 4 Wagon Trail, is the last 6.1 mile segment of unengineered and unimproved state highway. As you are aware, the backbone of our local economy in rural Calaveras and access to greater population and distribution centers rests solely on rural two-lane highways. The State Route 4 Wagon Trail, as its name would give way, is quite literally a paved over wagon trail. It is a non-standard highway with narrow road widths, zero to two foot shoulders, and limited sight distances. Importantly, this section of road is the only section not designated as an STAA access route, limiting our region's capacity for commerce. With more than 600 farms, 20 wineries, and more than a million visitors a year, Calaveras relies upon the safety and mobility of our state highways. For these reasons, Calaveras is requesting zero cuts to our county share for the one and only capital project in our regional transportation improvement program. We also request coordination of our funding with the potential for a shop innovative <coughs> pilot program funds in the amount of $10 million for future consideration both by Caltrans headquarters and hopefully the CTC in the 2018 shop. It has taken our region nearly a decade to reach this point. We have accumulated 6.6 .6 million in regional improvement program funds. We are near completion of our environmental documentation phase anticipated for later this spring. And we are being considered for an innovative shop pilot program award in the amount of 10 million, which combined with our STIP has the potential to provide for an innovative and meaningful construction project along the State Route 4 corridor. We have also worked to gain community support with the adoption of a preferred alignment alternative by the County Board of Supervisors, our City Council, and the Calaveras Council of Governments. And while we stand here today with a request of the CTC, we want to demonstrate to you our commitment to be part of the funding solution. The Calaveras Council of Governments has hosted for the past several years regional forums on transportation funding, the funding crisis, and held discussions on self-help funding options. We have appointed a delegate committee comprised of our county supervisors, the city mayor, our COG board chair, and we are committed to continuing these discussions at a local level. We have also volunteered to host a CTC town hall meeting on the road user charge pilot program to spread the word amongst rural communities the need for alternative funding systems and solutions. We are now working with our four county rural neighbors to build a coalition of talking points and funding solutions for rural communities. Our delegate committee has also engaged our legislators, sending letters and meeting with them to relay the merits of our project and the impacts that this funding crisis is having in our region. I believe a letter from Barry Hill and Bigelow to be forthcoming to the CTC. On behalf of the COG, I would like to thank you for the consideration of our request and while the horse-drawn carriages are gone, our region's need for mobility and safety on our state highway <coughs> still remains. If you are interested in learning more about our wagon trail project, I would encourage you to take a look at our video on our Calaveras Council of Government website or our Facebook page. Thank you, and I'm happy to entertain any questions that you may have. Thank you, Ms. Eads. Before I uh, see if the commissioners have any questions, let me comment uh, all of the information that's provided in these areas, including the video, <coughs> to the full commission so they have an opportunity to review this information before they will consider uh, the recommendation.
recommendations of staff in, uh, in May. Thank so you. They will have an opportunity to do that and also express appreciation to the delegation that came today. Uh, and I have been in, in contact with Mr. Stein uh, on, the, on the issues in, in Calaveras County. So any questions from the commission? Okay. Uh, a real quick, uh, based on, on your, the new, um, the, the sheet you provided us, you have now delayed, you have delayed construction, right, to 2021, so they do have a delay now. Correct. Um, right away and construction. Correct. Okay. And our main goal is to remain competitive for the consideration of the Innovative Shop Pilot <coughs> Program, and so we really want to work to align our programming uh, with the $10.3 million that we have potentially through that program. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to move on to Butte County Association of Governments, Yvonne Garcia, uh, who's the programming manager for Butte County uh, Tracer. Uh, Butte County is uh, located on page six of your book. Butte County is proposing to delete 1.5 million overall. They are proposing to delete one project, the Route 70 passing lanes. They do not propose any delays to the last two years of the STIP period. Good morning, Yvonne Garcia with the Butte County Association of Governments. And uh, that is that's correct, we are proposing to delete one of three projects, that's all we have, for a total of three million, 1.5 million in regional improvement program funds, and 1.5 million in interregional improvement program funds. And that project was identified on current spreadsheet for deletion. Our, our tip is consistent with Caltrans District 3's recommendation. Um, our target, reduction target, was 3.9 million and we were able to come up with 1.5 million in reduction. Anything above that would really tap into our regional priority, our State Route 70 passing lane project segment one, which is recommended for programming for construction. Um, we hope it's enough, the 1.5 million. Um, you know, whatever the outcome is, uh, whatever results, we will continue to work in a positive, cooperative manner with Commission staff and Caltrans, and we'll do what we have to do. We've been working on this corridor for my entire 23 years at BCAG, and we'll get there one day. <laughs> and we can talk more, more details at our town hall meeting next month in Chico. Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, questions from the Yes, the Commissioners Madera County is located on uh, page 27 in your red book. They're proposing to delete 1.5 million overall, um, deleting a, a small Route 99 widening project um, with no delays to the last two years. Thank you, Troy McNeil, Madera County Transportation Commission. Uh, first of all, I just want to excuse our executive director, Patricia Taylor, is at a funeral today and asked I, <clears throat> excuse me, that I be here today. And also joining me is Jeff Finley, who helped prepare our, our, our tip. Thank you for the opportunity to speak before you this morning, and thank you for the efforts to help fix this tip. Madera worked in good faith on a revised R tip that was completed in partnership with Caltrans District 6 and Caltrans headquarters. Madera deleted a State Route 99 winding project from the program in the revised submittal and is proposing to keep one State Route 99 widening project that is close to being shelf ready to remain in the program to help keep the project moving forward. To help do our part in keeping the project moving forward, our board approved to add local measure funds to replace the proposed ITIP reduction. M MCTC is pursuing federal grants, specifically the Fast Lane Federal Highway Freight Funding Program to fund the construction phase. This State Route 99 project is supported by the state and is a state priority. We also ask that the new federal freight funding that may come to California be prioritized for national freight projects that will be deleted from the STIP. In addition, we are encouraging our representatives to work on a transportation funding package for the state of California to address the transportation funding concerns. Thank you, and I can take any questions. Any questions for Mr. McNeil? Hearing none, thank you, Troy. We'll move on to the San Antonio Council of Governments. Uh, Mary Gilbert, the executive director, is here. Uh, or, or the yes, uh, Commissioner San Benito is on page 50. They're not proposing any deletions or delays. They basically have one 
project in their county right now? Yes, good morning, commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Um, we do only have one project in our RTIP, and this is our high priority project. Um, we've been working with Caltrans on this project for a number of years. Um, this is the State Route 156 San Benito Improvement Project. The project will convert a two lane rural highway with over 40 driveways and access points to a four lane expressway. Um, it, this project represents a partnership, a partnership between COG, um, all of our local agencies agencies and Caltrans. We're making a significant uh, local investment of $9.6 million in regional traffic impact fees um, committed to the project. Um, this project supports goods, goods and freight movement with up to 9% of truck traffic originating out of the Castroville, Monterey Bay, Salinas Valley, and Hollister area to the San Joaquin Valley. Um, it also supports recreational travel to the Monterey Bay area um, <clears throat> from, from the east. Um, it's uh, the only direct agricultural goods movement and recreational route south of the Bay Area um, connecting the, re the coast and the San Joaquin Valley. Um, and addi in addition, it supports commute travel from San Benito County to the Monterey County area. So we recognize the great challenge that you are facing right now. We have con uh, contacted our legislators and urged support for more transportation funding. And in addition, we are uh, proposing uh, ballot measures on the June ballot, actually. So we'll be going out very soon for that to help support all the transportation needs in our county. Any questions? Commissioners, any questions for Ms. Uh, Ms. Gilbert? I have a wrap-up question. But. Okay. What, what's the total project cost? Um, the total project cost is um, is eighty-one million, including prior years. Um, and is this the one that you considered a toll, or not? Is no, this is not a toll project. Oh, that's no. fifty-two. Okay. Yeah, this is same okay. 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 Well, when you only have one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions for? Ms. Gilbert, thank you, Mary. Um, Commissioner Hart, uh, there's a, we have a request to comment from uh, Mr. Newton from the city of Susanville. Do you want to hear from him first? Or? Sure. Let's hear from thank Dan you. Newton, the city of Sun Susanville. Thank you, commissioners uh, and staff. I will be brief. Uh, my name is Dan Newton. I am the public works director for the city of Susanville. Made the drive down this morning primary, primarily to listen and, and learn. <coughs> Didn't want to uh, waste my opportunity to speak. Uh, it was a pretty lengthy drive. So I uh, just wanted to start off by uh, expressing appreciation uh, to the CTC for the continued support for uh, local road uh, rehabilitation projects. That is a primary need that we have identified in our region. The <coughs> Lassen County Transportation Commission Regional Transportation Plan uh, lists local road rehab as a top priority for us. So if you uh, look at our, uh, our region's uh, RTIP submittal, you'll see a lot of rehab projects listed there. Uh, we've been fortunate to receive uh, several allocations uh, this fiscal year. We're very grateful for that, and uh, we're seeking continued support. Uh, in addition, <coughs> we're always looking for opportunities to leverage uh, shop funds and other federal uh, grant programs, and so we'll continue to do so as well. So that's all I had. Thank you. Questions for Mr. Newton? Thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. um, any additional uh, public comments? Seeing none, I will close the uh, hearing and we'll hear closing uh, questions or comments from the commissioners. Well, uh, in my day job, we always um, divided north and south California at the Kern King County line. I don't know if that is everybody else's, but in the collective bargaining world of the construction unions, that's where it is. So that's where it has been for me. In the 40, that leaves 46 northern counties. Out of 46 northern counties, six met the target, and 40 did not. And we're looking at a collective, uh, this is throughout California, of almost $230 million that we're going to have to deal with uh, on the regional program. Um, because a lot of folks have basically, you know, kicked the can down the road, much like the legislature has done on, uh, on, uh, on the funding effort. Um, I don't know if that's because we hope that there will be some light um, 
maybe not at the end of the tunnel, but somewhere in between that suddenly shows and allows us to uh, put some more money back in. I don't know exactly what is the motivation, but uh, where does that leave us as a commission? Or, you know, uh, we're going to have to bite the bullet, it looks like to me. You are. <laughs> Um, let me just respond in one way. Some of those uh, counties in the north, I will say, in, in their defense, have no programming, uh, where they've programmed large projects in the past. So they, may, they, they have sort of a target based on a percentage, but they have no projects to delete. And so we're sort of stuck on some of those counties. All right. Commissioner Inman? Well, I share my fellow commissioners and our staff's anguish, I think. Uh, we tried to, I think, be as respectful as we could and try to get everybody to put all our heads together. But when we have this kind of a gap, I don't know, I guess we could look at what the stock market folks do with the darts and the experts and, you know, I, I don't know. I, for all of us, I mean, we're going to have to talk about what do we do. Uh, we've all been reaching out to the elected saying, you know, it's not there, it's not there. But on the other hand, we haven't seen anything yet. So we really can't spend money that we don't have. We don't have a credit card that we can just charge things on. Uh, so I I'm perplexed and it saddens me that we're having to do this tough work. Because I think all the needs, I don't, I don't think anybody put anything on the list that wasn't a project that ultimately we'd like to do. So it's tough. I think our partners have taken different approaches. I realize the politics in some of this, where maybe you can't vote to take something off when you're asking for something else. We have a number of counties. Jim, how many counties are going out for sales tax? Yeah, so, you know, another 720, so we're still short from where we were, even if we got all of those, uh, and chances are. Uh, we would love for Debbie Hale not to be the president of the aspiring counties <laughs> coalition, and so I don't know. I mean, we're going to have to get really, we've got tough work to do, and I don't know an easy way to do it, so we're open to hearing that when you all can't prioritize or don't help us, then we're going to be stuck making tough decisions. Um, I will tell you that I'm happy to meet with anybody, and I always listen and learn. Um, but I don't know what else we can do. Yeah, I just, I mean, I've spent a whole career representing the industry that, that has people that do this work. And uh, we're talking lots of jobs and a lot of contractors. So, you know, this is tough. We're at a place where the rubber meets the road and you guys have done, I think, what you're paid to do. You're trying to solve the problem as best you can. You're trying to minimize uh, where, you know, a, a difficult situation. And, uh, you know, I understand all that. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that that number that we're looking at, unless there is some real uh, solution put forth, that number is going to get bigger. It's not going to get smaller. So, you know, uh, it just seemed that's why we struggled as a commission to figure out where to land on this. And we landed at the most um, humane number that we thought we could do responsibly. Uh, and some of you who were at the hearing knew that there were other commissioners that were saying we needed to go harder. Well, you know, we, we chose the softest route we could that was still responsible. And we're, you know, we're, we're hundreds of millions of dollars short of that target. So uh, I don't see that we have any choice but to, uh, to make, make additional cuts. And they're, they're going to hurt. They're going to cut deep. And, uh, you know, I think the best thing you can do is you can blame it on us if you want. That's fine. But you can, you're going to have to go back and, and, and tell your folks that until... Uh, we get a funding solution. This is the future of, of, of funding in California. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, just to reiterate, uh, you can see that the commission is in a very difficult position. I've been in the business for 42 years. I've never seen it this bad from a, a financial perspective. 
Uh, we haven't uh, had a situation where we've looked at deprogramming projects, taking them out of existing program documents. Uh, in, uh, obviously, since uh, 1997, when the, the new process was put in place with uh, SB 45. Um, I, I do want to say that we should commend the regions because most of you have been very helpful in contacting your state legislators yeah. to advise them of the situation and let them know we have a very, very tough problem and it really does need to be dealt with. I uh, certainly appreciate that and I just want to commit to the staff and I know Ms. Branson feels the same way. We'll do its best to continue to collaborate uh, with the regions on determining uh, how uh, we develop recommendations for presentation to the commission. But it is a really unfortunate situation. Uh, it's a tough, uh, tough uh, role to put the commission in. Um, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be very problematic. We need to continue to keep the pressure on uh, to uh, make sure that everybody understands that we need more resources. I'm just going to read you a quote that's included in the MTC uh, a handout today. We have no choice but to maintain our transportation infrastructure, yet doing so without an expanded and permanent revenue source is impossible. That means at some point, sooner rather than later, we have to bite the bullet and enact new fees and taxes for this purpose. Ideology and politics stand in the way, but one way or another, the roads must be fixed. And that's from Governor Edmund G. Brown as part of his uh, State of the State address uh, this past January. It's a very serious problem. My thanks to Ann Johnson and the Caltrans staff for putting uh, this uh, all together. Uh, I saw Mitch Weiss and uh, Garth Hopkins from the CTC staff here, wanted to acknowledge them as well. And with that, thank you all for your participation and we'll continue to work with you to try to manage through this very difficult situation.